Hi, this is the weather forecast for Thursday through Monday, April 9 through 13. Get us into the middle of the month almost. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Unsworth for Longmont Public Media. Let's start with the moon. Uh, in the middle of our forecast window, Saturday, April 11th, before it really hits. Well, maybe not. We'll see. It may be raining then. But uh, we will have a waxing crescent, moon rising kind of later in the evening. Uh, you won't see it unless you're out late, and uh, we are just past full. And the big story is a big change. We've had some beautiful weather, warm temperatures, dry conditions. Uh, maybe a little too dry for some, but uh, it's, it's been very nice to be out getting some uh, uh, exercise, so a bit of walking in and like that. Well, that's going to come to an end. Sorry. But it's middle of April. This is our second snowiest month climatologically, and uh, that's what's happening. As Thursday noon comes about, about the time we go live with this, uh, Longmont is on the northeast side of a front kind of draped along the mountains. This is sort of a, an orographic front. Orographic mean created by mountains or elevation. And so, yeah, lots of cool air pouring down in the center part of the nation. The leading edge of that is this front stretching from the east coast down into the Gulf uh, states and then up through the Rockies, all the way up into the Canadian Rockies. So it really is on the western side, all stopped by elevation. The system we're looking at is rolling around. It's been creating day after day of rain in Southern California. And that will continue for a while before it heads our way. For Friday morning, the front's still here, but a piece of upper level energy comes through and kicks off some mountain snows, lower elevation rain showers for Friday. You can see the main storm is still back here in the uh, southwest. Take a look at the big picture and then we'll come back to this graphic a little bit later. Here's our outstanding warmth uh, going through Thursday, even into Saturday. So it's not over yet, even if showers are returning, you'll have to dodge those. It's not until Sunday that the bottom drops out or late Saturday night. And it takes us quite a while, most of the week, to be returned to above freezing temperatures. As you can see down here, this blue line really marks the main front the main storm uh, impact and from there on the ensemble runs these are all different runs of the model horizontally uh, through time uh, agree pretty well that there's rain or snow falling all right this is an animation putting everything together and we'll run through this a few times because i'm talking over the beginning of it right now but uh, this is a 500 mil bar, mil bar map. This is halfway up in the atmosphere as pressure goes, where there's cold air, dense air. The heights you have to go to to find half pressure are lower, and where it's warmer, they're higher. So you can kind of see a direct correlation there. And we're going all the way through uh, near the end of April. So April 23rd, or April 24th at the end, starting out. Here's our low rolling around Southern California. Actually, by Friday, it rolls down southwest before it connects with the jet, rolls by on Sunday, giving us our Sunday storm. And then we have this northwest flow again, uh, setting up for a long time. Here's another storm coming Thursday, Friday, Saturday next week, a brief ridge, and the northwest flow kind of keeps going with another ripple coming in Tuesday the 21st. Northwest flow still keeping us cooler, there's another ripple for Friday the 24th. So let's do it one more time. Here's the low rolling down, down to the southwest, then it reconnects Saturday into Sunday. That's when we get our first big shot. This ripple gives us our next big shot on Monday, Tuesday. Another ripple for later in the week. But this is definitely puts us on the cool side of the, uh, the jet stream flow, which is created by the boundary between warm and cool air. The two kind of chicken and egg off of each other. So how much precipitation will we get out of all this? Well, over the next five days, we'll just take it in pieces here. Uh, it's a pretty good amount, about a quarter inch, maybe a half inch of, of total precipitation. That's rain and snow melted added together. Snow, according to the GFS, uh, kind of hits in the one inch to two inch area. 
towards Firestone, maybe a little bit less, more of a coating. Uh, so again, not big yet, not big snow producer yet, but it's going to keep going next week. You can see after this passes and the big Sunday, Monday precipitation chances go, we have temperatures below freezing from Sunday early morning all the way to Wednesday night. And even then, it just gets up to the vicinity of freezing. So it's really not till Thursday afternoon that we warm up uh, enough to start seeing some melting. So this is all snow in here. What does that look like when you add it up? What we see over the next 10 days in precipitation is a lot of water. This is the one inch mark in the blue green boundary. One inch of liquid snow and rainfall melt. Two inches right on this side and even uh, two and a half inches just up in the foothills above us. So definitely a lot of water coming down if you're concerned at all about moisture that's taken care of in the next 10 days. For snowfall it's impressive as well. You can see six inches out uh, to the east of Fort Collins. Little downslope hole here around Denver. It's kind of interesting where they only get uh, one to four inches. Uh, but where we are sitting that puts us pretty clearly in the one foot to even 16 inch mark. There's 14 inches coming around here um, and right up here, Estes Park, foot and a half or so. So very snowy for the mountains and the foothills, snowy on the plains. Here's an interesting comparison. This is a different model. This is the GEM model, a Canadian model. And the, taking a look at the forecast, 10 day forecast, so it's looking at the same accumulation period for snow for us using 10 to 1 snow ratio. If you're wondering what that means, I'll, let me take a little side trip here. 10 to 1 snow means if you get one inch of liquid, that's 10 inches of snow. A tenth of an inch of liquid would give you one inch of snow. So it's sort of the, it's how fluffy or versus compact or slushy the snow is. And 10 to 1 is a pretty good marginal kind of warm snow, warm being in the upper 20s, lower 30s snow ratio. It can be worse. It can be 1 to 8 or 1 to 5 if you're just a little above or right at freezing. If you get extremely cold, you get down to the 20 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit area or colder, this can be 1 to 15 because it comes down so fluffy and light, so much air in it that it builds up much deeper. What we see on the 10 day forecast with the Canadian model uh, is a lot more snow. Uh, this puts us in the let's see, green is 12 to 18 inch area. Now, the forecast made Wednesday looks quite different. We're still in that area with a bullseye of two feet in the mountains above Longmont and the higher elevations here. But the plains are very different. There's a trail of half inch, a half foot to a foot of snow across the northern part of the state out into Nebraska. Going back, that heavier band is down in southeastern Colorado with less up there. Well, the plains get a lot overall. But you can see just one day how different the pattern can be. We're pretty far away from the next 10 days. A lot can change, uh, especially with the cutoff low. That low that's wobbling around in Southern California can take another wobble and change the timing, change the amount of moisture, change the availability of cold air. So you can't get too married to any one of these model forecasts. I thought it would be fun to take a look at what the uh, National Weather Service, NOAA, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Climate Prediction Center is, is predicting for April for the nation. We're uh, about a week into April, but uh, we just looked at an actual model run going out. We can kind of see if that still makes sense from the forecast that they made probably about a week and a half ago. What they say, see is with Longmont here near normal conditions, for temperature, cooler in the northern Rockies, a lot warmer in the southeastern eastern part of the state, the nation. The pattern that we just saw with repeated uh, 
occurrences of northwest flow over the next uh, two weeks or plus would put us in a lot colder regime, I think. So we'll have to look back and see what we see afterwards. And for precipitation, we're getting ripple after ripple down that northwest flow. This flow coming from the northwest, that's why we call it northwest flow. And that would imply a lot more moisture, especially if we get an inch to two inches of liquid in just the next 10 days. This is probably not going to hold up. But we'll see. It's, it's their, their take on it. All right, putting the next seven days into quick graphic here. We stay pretty mild through Saturday. The front doesn't come in until Saturday evening. Uh, take a look at longmontobserver.org. As we get closer to Saturday, I'll have a more refined position of where the sun and rain showers change over to some ice and some snow in the evening. Beforehand, though, we do have some chance of showers, especially with with some warming in the afternoon, some moisture coming out ahead of that uh, trough in the west. It's, it's not going to be just bone dry like it was uh, for the last five days or so. Then Sunday, Easter, we have a lot of snow. A uh, good, good couple inches, healthy inches right now is what it looks like. Uh, sunrise service, if you're doing it in your backyard, sunrise I think is 627 a.m. Looks like it should be cloudy with a good chance of snow and east northeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles an hour so it won't feel good to be outside monday we still have an ongoing chance of uh, snow showers tuesday the same kind of diminishing a little and then it's, the storminess picks up again with another ripple coming by on wednesday but temperatures will be a little warmer in the day so it might change over to rain For more local news, take a look at longmontobserver.org. You'll see my weather column there, and you will get uh, more frequent weather updates. If any watches or warnings are issued, I try to get those posted there as quickly as possible as well. For Longmont Public Media, this has been your weather forecast in Longmont. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth. Keep looking up.